we're going to start out with Deuteronomy, the scripture, Deuteronomy 8 and 2. And it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, in the wilderness, and to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And then it goes on, it says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and feed thee with manna which thou know not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord thy God. Out of the Lord doth man live. Amen. I want to go to and just reading about um, the blessings of the Lord and um, what we expect and out of God because we tend to expect more out of him than we think that he expects from us but again just reading all over Deuteronomy it says that the Lord says that we keep his commandments and walk in his ways and um, we tend to think that you know some of the Bible some of the words in the Bible are just words and they're not um, when he says keep my commandments it means anything that God asks you to do and we can't as believers get away from the fact that he calls us to really become separate from the world that he holds us to the same standard um, as he did uh, to the disciples as he did to Paul he he holds us to the same standards as believers and um, I see a lot of people that are shying away from church because they be, have become um, hurt in the church they don't feel comfortable um, being a part of a organization or whatever the case may be um, I just know that God is a good God and you know, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. He said that he's married to the backslider, but his goal is that everybody be saved. And so we tend to think that uh, our titles or uh, the more work that we do in church or um, the more prayer. Uh, if I pray more than this person, then God is going to bless me more. But the truth of the matter is, God looks at your heart. Again, it said he wanted to know what was in your heart. He stripped you down to basically um, nothing. He suffered you to hunger. And if you were in the real life situation where you've suffered to hunger, he stripped you to nothing. You're suffering and struggling financially. You've gotten a few bad reports. Um, you you come to church and you come all dressed up and you know you put on your best dress and <laughs> and 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 you some of them some of us go as far as you dressing with your handbag shoes and your scarf your best suits your best your gaiters and we have the nerve to clap our hands and shout hallelujah and we pray. And then we expect God to answer our prayers. Um, we get comfortable in our everyday routines. And, and, and our time with the Lord gets less. And, and, and we skip every opportunity to take advantage, to witness to someone. Uh, because we're always busy. We're rushing. Uh, we're so busy shopping and we've got the nerve to get angry with God when things doesn't go our way and in our favor and, and then we're quoting scripture saying, Well God, dear Lord, I think I thought that all things were supposed to work together for the good and and, and then we we say I was speaking those things that be not as though they were. So what's happening? And so we are getting away from the fact that God wants us to keep his standards. To say to stay separate from this world, um, 
That's part of what it means to when it says to be to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because I know, you know, with singles, um, you know, a lot of times we get to uh we're saying that we're praying for our mate and we want a um husband or a wife and are we willing to go through what it takes? Are we willing to make that sacrifice? Um and dedicate ourselves to the Lord and listen to him and follow his instructions and prepare ourselves for that person or our help me to come into our lives. Are we really or are we gonna just ignore that part of what he says and he asks us to do and we jump right to expecting God to receive God's benefits? And a lot of times we come out hurt because we haven't waited. We haven't stopped to listen to think or hear God in this situation. We, we jump too fast. Um, and then uh, we expect that, that God to be what he said he was going to be. But you never kept your end of the deal. God chases who we love. Deuteronomy 5, what is it, 8, 5 and 3, 6, it says, Thou shalt consider in your heart that as a man chasing his son so the Lord God will chase in you and so we say God we want to live for you and we're in this ungodly relationship with the person and then we forget that we told God that we would live for him we said God if you will do this for me then I'll do this for you and we start stepping outside of the will of God but guess what? God is going to keep his end of the deal. <clears throat> and so a lot of times, in order for us to get back into his will, back on track, he has to chasten us. He might allow Satan to buffet us. He might allow some attacks to keep us on our knees. And how can you come to church and expect God to move? And see, with the text, it says, it, 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 we expect God to move, but we don't expect God to know. See, he says that he knows everything. There's nothing that's hid from him. So it's not like he doesn't know you're shacking up. It's not like he doesn't know that you're struggling with fornication, pornography, addiction. He doesn't, it's not like he doesn't know you are self-centered and prideful so you can come to church and pretend like you're just loving, giving person and when you get home, you go back to being your old selfish ways. It's not like you can put on the front that he won't see. He knows everything. He even knows what you're going to do today, tomorrow, and the next 30 seconds. He, al he also knows what you're going to do. You're doing right now, this very minute. I don't know, but he can see you. I don't know, but he knows. He knows everything. He is our creator. That's the part that we forget that God is in control. That's the part we forget when we come to get saved. We forget that part of this is free. Salvation is free, but we forget that. We're to submit our lives to Christ. We forget that. If you want to go deeper in Christ now. I'm not, I'm not saying that everybody has a call in their lives. But part of being peculiar and set aside. And set apart from this world. Means that we give up our will. For his will. It means that. And you know, worship, and we, he asks us to worship him in spirit and in truth. We, we don't know that, or some people don't know that any service or ministry offered up to God is worship. So for some of us that come to church and just sit down and listen to the word and leave, for those that don't know, that means that you can come to church and dedicate your time in the house of the Lord. And that's another that's another way to worship God. Um, even in tithing. Um, 
a lot of us feel that you know we 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 we're more hard on ourselves. I heard a lot of people be more hard on themselves that say that they are on a fixed income. But we can't forget that scripture says God was the one that gave you the power to get wealth. That God was the one to bless you with the income that you have. Why not give something? We're stepping outside of what the Bible says. And we're trying to transform and conform the word of God to our world. We can't do that. You know, we come to church all dressed up and in our best dress with our scarves and our hats and our shoes, our gaiters, our suits. We clap our hands and we get, and we expect God to move, but we don't give God anything. We get comfortable in our everyday routine, but we don't give God anything. We expect, we expect God to move, but we skip every opportunity to witness to somebody. We skip every opportunity to give God or give somebody a word that might need it. You know, it could be our nasty attitude. We may not have that time. We may be in a rush. But we miss every opportunity to witness to somebody. We miss every opportunity. And that's selfishness. That's our own self-righteousness. The Bible says our own self-righteousness are as filthy as rags in the eyesight of the Lord. And then we say that we love God. How much do we really love God? Because keeping his commandments doesn't necessarily mean the Ten Commandments. It's anything that God asks us to do. And a lot of what he asks us to do is not only to praise and to worship him, but he asks us to make that sacrifice. So, how can we say we love God and we're still living in sin? And I believe when you know better, you have to do better. So how much do you really love God? Part of the word says to pray for your enemies. Isn't that a hard thing to do? But there's a reason why God may say to pray to pray for them. There's a reason why God may say uh, to feed them. That's why it says to turn the other cheek and go the extra mile. Huh? We're the temple of God. We are to live holy and righteous. We are, if we want to be filled with his spirit, how can he operate in anger and rage and bitterness and resentment? How can you expect God to move when your mind and your body and your soul is filled up with all of this other stuff that's just not necessary? James 3 and 6, I think it is, says, um, 3.16 says, where there is envy and strife, there is chaos and confusion. And I've seen so much envy and strife in church. How is it that you can come to church and expect God to move? And you're, and you're jealous of people. You're jealous because somebody else has a gift that you don't have. Um... You're jealous because God is using someone else differently than they're using you. You know, that goes along with spiritual maturity because the reason he might, the gifts of God are irrevocable. God chose that person and he didn't choose you. And maybe because he, you, he didn't see you were spiritually mature. He had a purpose for you, just like he has a purpose for that person. And you're going against the will of God for that person's life. You're jealous because God is using them in a mighty or major way. And they're not using, he's not using you. Hmm. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17 says, 
Know ye not to have that you are the temple of God. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which ye are you. So which temple are you? Are you the temple of God? Or are you a vehicle for Satan? Hmm. How can you expect God to move in fornication and homosexuality under the, or even if you were under the influence of any addiction or drug and any bondage? My God. He asks us to be set aside and separate from this world. We say we love God. In his word, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You will live. You will love and be holy and you want to be fruitful and possess the land. He gives us the power to declare and decree to live an abundant life. Everything that you, you, everything that you put your hands to do will prosper in Jesus name. Wow. But he says, if you remember the Lord and his ways, that he will give you the power to get wealth. All things that you are to possess. Hmm. He'll bring us into, into lands of brooks of waters and fountains. Hallelujah. And depth and deep. He says, and springs out of the valleys and hills of land and wheat and barley and vines and figs and pomegranates and land of oil and honey. Just, just, just taste and see that the Lord is good. I mean, uh, he, he's, in other words, a life of debt, life debt free, bills being paid in advance, beautiful homes and houses, mortgages being paid, those things that you can have. See, a lot of people want to believe that, and then when it doesn't happen, they want to go back to them old, their old selves, because God can give you something, and the same thing that he gives you and blesses you with could be the same thing that can curse you. He can give you something so that you can be saved, to save you, and to try to bring you out of what you were in so that you can believe in him. He can do things for you that nobody else could or would have if we keep his commandments. Yeah, I know the Bible says that God is married to the backslider. He gives us grace. His grace is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in weakness. But grace can run out. Grace can run out. And John says, in John it says, no man knows the hour. We don't ever know the hour when he's going to come and that can mean in whatever different way he comes that can be when he moves on a situation that can be mean when when it's time to transition it could be it could mean no man knows the hour we have to always be ready nobody's promised tomorrow but somewhere you know enough about God to know that you had to be at church today on Easter if you decided not to go to church any other day you decided to go today because you know that there is something about our God that we serve God told me the other day, he said, there's no I without me. In him we move, breathe, and have our being. We can do all things through Christ Jesus. You know, a lot of people say, and a lot of people praise titles. But you got to remember, God didn't need a title when he created this earth. He's the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. He is your creator. 
and he sent your son Jesus to die for your sins, to die so that you could be free of strongholds and bondages that you keep running back to. The scripture says he looks at your heart. So you can put up the front that you love everybody in this world and you kiss everybody on the cheek and you go back to your own selfish, self-centered ways when you leave church. But God knows your heart. There's nothing hid from him. There's nothing that you can do that he won't know anything about. He knows where you're going to be in the next 20 or 30 years. He knows what you're doing right now. But it's you who makes that decision to accept him into your life. And when we come to Christ, we should honor him. Who do you know right now to this day in the flesh, in the natural, that will lay down their life for you? And so the question still remains the same. How much do you really love God? Do you love enough, him enough to honor him and keep his commandments, to keep his requests? To listen to him? Do you honor him enough to give him your time so that he can spiritually mature you and put you in a place for those that want to be used that can be used? Hmm. It says in 2 Timothy 2 and 21, it says, If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be. A vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Pure. Purity. That should cut out a lot of that being jealous of one or another's gifts in God. That means God has put something into you or that person for his purpose in the kingdom. That person, that person may have already paid the price, may have already made those sacrifices in life. God knew you before the foundation of this world. He knows you better than you know yourselves. Like you know the back of your hand. He said for the, the very hairs of your head are numbered. So he definitely has, he knows what you have the need of. Trust him. A lot of times it's hard to trust him. It's hard for us to get to that point where we say, I'm walking on water. Peter walked on water until he began to doubt and question. When you decide to make that, when you settle it in your heart, that you're going to trust him, that you're going to serve him in spirit and in truth with all your heart and soul, that you love God. Because you can say that you love him and you can go back and talk about your friend, put down and distort the truth in the life of another believer. But that's not really love. That's not really God. And remember that every idle word we will give account for on the day of judgment. So just think about your own selfish gains and the things that you've been trying to do and move in your own strengths by lying and being deceitful. How much do you really love God? How much are you, of you are you willing to give to him today? Don't just go to church just because it's Easter. Remember that God died for you. God sent Jesus to die for you. And if you're in a place in life where you're struggling and suffering and you know that there's more, then you've got to believe in his word. If you can't trust anybody and people have disappointed you in life, 
you can believe that you can live off of every word that proceed from the mouth of God. He said, his word, heaven and earth may pass away, but his word may not, will not until it comes, until it manifests. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will not until it does the thing that I sent it to do. If you ever spoke a word over your life, you've got to fight for the things that God promised you. And it is a struggle. Life is a struggle. Nobody's living a perfect life. Nobody's perfect. I haven't met a perfect person yet that didn't have anything to go, that they weren't going through. But the key is to know that God can get you through it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through the fire and did not get burned. You got to know that that was a true story in the Bible. Any storm that you're going through, just pass the test. Allow God to move. Get self out of the way. Ask God, what is it that you're showing me? What is it that you would like for me to see? Or to understand about you. He wants a deeper connection. He wants a, a relationship with you. And it's well worth it. Just try him. I guarantee you just try him. And if it's not what you expect. I'm quite sure the devil won't have any. No reason. No problem taking you back. To keep you in bondage. So I can't ask, how much do you really love God? God is a man that he should not lie. And his words remain the same. Just like he's the same today as he was yesterday. And he'll be the same tomorrow. I hope this helps someone. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other again real soon when the Lord shares something with me. I'll be glad to share it with you. But remember the Lord said there is no I without me. We can do all things in Christ but without him we are nothing. It doesn't matter whether you are a doctor, lawyer, nurse, cosmetologist. Thank you for joining us for a new episode of Let's Talk. Thank you for all of your support. Until next time, stay safe and be blessed. And remember, your faith should not lie in the hands of man, but in the power of God.